Hey everyone, it's Kat. And I'm Amber. And we are Wandering Suit. Black lesbian expats, y'all. We've been practicing. We've been practicing. <laughs> so today we come to you from the inside of our apartment, but outside a little bit. We are on the balcony a little bit, a little bit. And we thought we'd just do a quick video to tell you of things that we were thinking about, which was five mistakes we made when we moved to Southeast Asia. Five. Eh, there's more. We're going to limit it to five. So if you want more, we'll give you more. That's okay. We're going to keep ourselves happy and lifted with only five. Five. So, number one. What was our number one? Housing. <sighs> Big one. Yeah. It's, because, it's the reason why it's number one for us. Yeah, because it's important. We, we like to be comfortable. We're, you know, creatures of comfort. We're so, both Taurus. Yes. So, and you have to pay for that no matter where you are in the world. So you really have to think about that before you move so that you're setting up, you're putting aside or you're allocating money, real accurate amount of money mm -hmm. for your house. Right. So we came over, um, we first went to Singapore, we stayed there for like a week, very expensive. Then from there we went to Malaysia for another three or four days, not as expensive, but again, transportation to the uh, housing, things like that, ugh, it's a hassle. Then we got to Cambodia and we had housing there for about two and a half weeks, we thought we could find us an apartment, we couldn't. So, because we, there was, um, the market looked one way online and it was actually reality a different way. So, you have to allocate more money to uh, short-term housing, right. if you will. Um, you definitely don't want to rent an apartment site unseen or a home site unseen. Because you're not even sure you're going to like the house. There's always going to be quirks that just may not be the quirks that you can deal with. And you don't know the neighborhood. No matter how many times you look at it in Google and you talk to people in uh, other expat groups and they say, oh, this neighborhood is the best neighborhood. That doesn't mean it's the best neighborhood for you right. and your family, right? So you want to budget for short-term housing, Airbnb, hotels, VRBO, anything like that. But you want to have a good padding for that, right? Don't shortchange yourself, only do a week, and then rush to get into an apartment that you're stuck in for the next six months to a year because they are very, very hard on contracts. Once you sign a contract, you in it to win it. Right. Ain't no getting no money back. Not no, you ain't getting because you changed back. your mind. Right. That's not going to happen. So, not unless you, you know, what you thought was going to be a beautiful house and it was a mud, but something like that. That's because you, you ready to say, oh, it's an experience. No. All right, number two. Mm -hmm. But it's money. Money, money, money. Money's always, it's always there. So when you're traveling and you're just, you're gonna move and you're, you're leaving it all and you're going overseas, it's easy to fall for the trap of, you know, the oh you can live for this here or you can live for that there and like believing all the things the that people say in the videos, right? And some of it's true, and it can be true for some people. Right. But you have to make sure it's true for you. Right. Um, and to be on the safe side, because it may not be true for you, you do want to have the money that you're going to need for actual for actual travel. Right. So what you want to do, I recommend if you think you need a budget of say twenty five hundred or four thousand, double it if you can, triple it if you can, because you're going to spend more money on stupid shit than you ever thought possible. We ate out every day. Two, three meals a day, late night snacks, cups of coffee, chips. We had kid, you know? The kid was not adjusting well to the food. So we had to keep finding things. Now we weren't adjusting well in some places, you know? So we would eat a whole meal or order a whole meal. We're like, we didn't like it, none of it. So then we gotta go order a whole nother damn meal. Right. Expenses. Um, and it's not just the flight. It's not just short-term housing. It's everything. When you get somewhere, you want to see where you're at, right? It's tourist stuff. Tourist stuff costs money, yeah. right? Even though you're living there now, you're still a tourist for a while. And you're going to want to see what you just tried to do. You know, you moved here for a purpose, right? And part of that purpose was to see the area. 
So budget and budget and budget. Save up as much money as you can. Uh, have a good credit card. Have a couple of good, decent debit cards, just in case one doesn't work. Cause baby, you you went through that eighth ATM trip trying to pull cash. Right. You're gonna wish you had a card that was a little easier to use it with. So make sure your banking's good too. Also notify your bank that you're going overseas, uh, and that so that your card will work. Cause once they cut that card off, they ain't giving it back hardly. And know what kind of currency you're gonna need depending on where you're going mm -hmm. because you may step off the plane and that be the, the currency the local right. currency be all that you can use right. and if you aren't prepared with that or to get it in the airport right. then you're going to be short so know ahead of time before you get there what's accepted what isn't right. and then you can always make those you can always do that at the airport you just right. need to be prepared to do it once you get there and do it before you leave and speaking of something you do before you leave <laughs> get your sim card before you leave the airport right. for your cell phone because cell phones do not work you have like t-mobile which typically has a good international plan but most of them don't if you have a, a cell phone Get a SIM card, but make sure your phone is unlocked. If it's not unlocked, then you have a nice calculator or a nice picture capture, which is a camera. It's a picture capture. It's a picture capture. But cool. uh, most airports have ATMs <laughs> where you can pull cash. Again, if your card works, do not use the money exchange in the airport. They will rob you blind. But let me tell you that do not use them. Don't believe the hype. Pull cash from the ATM, yeah. or take get it from home before you leave. Don't get a lot, but get enough for a ride. You never know what's going to happen. So have enough cash to get from where you're landing to where you're going. Yeah. Right. So this is where we made a mistake. Amber is a packer, uh, and Amber believes she needed every single item that she could carry. So Amber has literally. Pounds and pounds of stuff. Clothes she's not worn, uh, that she's gradually had to let go of along this trip, but we didn't need it from the get go, right? It's hot over here. So, a lot of winter things, no. No. Heavy dresses, not gonna work. You're gonna pass out before you even get down the street good, right? So, um, but she had to have her essential oils, she had to have her vitamins, all the things we could have easily bought here, vitamin wise oils maybe not so much that's another video y'all it's coming don't even worry about it but anyway travel light and it's not only includes when you make it there but go in there too because you have all these bags on the plane that you have to account for you got your carry-on bag you got your backpack you got your purse if you got it you got the kids stuff you got laptops you gotta hold accountable that and then when you land guess what you gotta get all that crap together to make it to your temporary home and then when you make it there guess what you gotta pack it up again to get your permanent home. This takes money and time because most of the vehicles here are not built for 10 suitcases. They're just not. You know, people just don't do not do that. So travel light. If you're gonna ship furniture, wait until you get to where you're going. Or Check don't. Out. Or don't. That's even better. But if you wanna ship your stuff, we sold our other stuff, but if you wanna ship your stuff, wait. Get settled in, make sure, look around, make sure what you don't need to ship, right? Your electronics won't work here, so why bother shipping them? Even with an adapter, they're going to eventually go crappy, right? Our laptops don't charge good anymore, right? Because yeah. um, they're in adapters, and it's just not its not great, right? So those are the things you have to think about. Uh, leave it behind. Travel light uses or take this opportunity to lighten your load. Yeah. And, and, and go. You know, if you're only worried about two sleep places versus ten, man, it's just an easier road at home. It makes life much easier. Yeah, and it makes you easier. less, I think it also makes you less vulnerable, less of a target. Yeah, because if, I mean, obviously there's not a whole lot you can do when you're so when you're busy looking and mining after, like, all these things you have, as opposed to being aware of what's going on around you, so it just makes everything better. Right. Yeah. We moved uh, two times in Cambodia before we got into our permanent home, and one of the moves, um, we misplaced my bag. We it was left in the back seat of the, the uh, grab. And I uh, had my laptop, all my electronics. I mean, it had literally a couple thousand dollars worth of stuff gone. Uh, fortunately, 
deep fried my bag back after I got the police in there. But I got my stuff back. But that's because we had so many bags. And we assumed that one person was doing this and one person was doing that. And the reality was, it didn't happen. Where you're going. Yep. All right. And the next one is support networks. Mm -hmm. So it goes without saying that you're going to leave things behind when you leave your home country. But you don't really realize what you're leaving, I think, until you have left it. You don't even think that you have a support network until you don't have one. And so you need to just think ahead about that because if you do, if you have depended on things like um, child care when you need it or someone to watch your dog or your cat or whatever the case may be, someone to watch your stuff while you go somewhere for the day or if you have to leave the area just, you know, uh, all of a sudden and you want to make sure your stuff is safe. Like... You know, usually you think there's somebody you probably can trust to do that, but once you have left the country, you're in a whole different situation. And so you need to think about that before you leave so that you can set yourself up for some kind of some kind of success, at least. Um, and the best way to do that, or one of the ways to do that, is to connect with people in groups, right. in Facebook groups in those countries. Um, or just people online that you meet that are in other countries and whatever the platform is, but actually reaching out and getting in contact with people before you leave, um, just to create those networks, those networks. They're not gonna be like the ones that you've known with people all of your life, but still, you need something. Right, right. So uh, Amber does that for us. I just, I am the recipient of her uh, networking for us. Occasionally I pull through and generally what happens is if she can't find someone to connect us, I'll end up finding someone to connect us to get something done. But we have been very, very fortunate in that everywhere we go, we meet up with someone, connect someone who gives us the insider tip on something. And it may be something we saw in a Facebook group. It may be um, just random on the street person who happened to give us a ride here. We talked to the grab guy. He said X, Y, and Z. Uh, our Tuk Tuk driver in Cambodia was excellent. Uh, we ended up having, um, so, you know, forming connection with him so much that we went to his wedding. So it's those type of things that you got to recognize that you're going to have to replace. And you have to, you know, work on doing that because we're so used to family and friends. You won't have those unless you bring family and friends with you. But even then, they're moving with you. They don't know nothing. Yeah. And that's yeah. number three. Down number four. <laughs> the last thing is unrealistic expectations. I mean... You know, yeah. definitely, you know, definitely jump when you're ready to jump. Like, right. don't let anything stop you. That's with life in general, not right. just moving overseas. But, you know, at the same time, be realistic in what you're doing. Like, realize that this is not the panacea for all of your ills or the world. Right. And there's going to be stumbling blocks and there's you're going to come across things you don't like when you get there. But just right. set yourself up for that. Just be like, you know what, this is a new experience. That's the point is that it's a change, right. and I'm for it, and all the things that come with it. Right. And if you prepare well enough, or, or if you do some Mentally. preparing right beforehand, then you're going to reduce the negative things, and right. you're going to have more positive things to embrace when you get there. But that includes all kinds of things, like the emotional part of it, the financial part of it, like... It, prepare yourself in those ways as well as far as what you expect like expect that you're going to be disappointed by some things expect that you're going to be you're going to wonder if you made the right decision sometimes you know but and there are going to be people who are going to judge you or going to say you know oh maybe if you hadn't done that or if you had done this differently but that's with anything in life so don't let it stop you just keep it moving be prepared and keep pushing it's going to take work if you're willing to make the move, then you must be willing to put in the work to make yourself happy wherever you're going. Uh, like she said, it's not going to be a sad. Uh, if you came here with a wound, you're going to keep that wound until you do the work to heal or whatever you need to do. But you're doing it in a new location, and that's it. But the person who moved is the same person that was in the States, right? So I think we came here that I did. I'm not going to say we. I'm going to say me. I came here looking for something. What I ended up finding was myself. And that was a beautiful thing, right? I found my voice a little bit more. I found our relationship. Uh, I found that I can overcome a lot. And I, I don't want to say, I always jump. 
head first into stuff because I feel like I can do anything. But coming here, I know that I can do a lot of things. Maybe not everything, but I can damn sure do a lot. So, again, just come in knowing that this is not going to be good unless you work on making it good. Yep. Great and better. It, but it can be. It definitely can. Moving overseas can be everything that you want it to be. And a lot of things you didn't know you wanted it to be. And a lot of things you still don't want it to be. But it can be done. And those are our top five, five things that we did wrong when moving to Southeast Asia. Will we change any of those? Well, we had to experience them to learn. Right. So, yeah, I probably wouldn't eat out as much. Right. Yeah, and I probably would uh, be more realistic in our temporary housing. I probably would give up a few things to save a few bucks because, um, I don't know, I didn't have to live as well in some of the temporary housing. I know Amber didn't think. I do. Well, or he would have just chosen better because I don't know that we necessarily lived well all the time in the sense that we had everything we needed. Right. We just, yeah. I mean, it looked good on the picture. Yeah, yeah things like a pool. We, could, we, could, we, could. we didn't need a pool. We didn't need a pool. We, yeah. It was cute though. Yeah. I got in it like a couple times. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. So that, that's about it for me. Yeah. Yep. Thank you guys. Let us know what else you want to know about if we have any more things that we are wondering about the move or whatever. Whatever questions you have, let us know. Subscribe, like, share, follow, all those things. Comment below. We definitely want to talk to you. Uh, if you got any questions, let us know. I'm Kat. I'm Amber. And we are wondering. Peace and love, y'all. See ya.